Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 .90 Beta. In this episode I hope to get our mission over to Mars at the very least. And of course the first thing to do is to rendezvous the lander with the return stage and then send them on their way to Transmars in Injection. Now I've got a plot here. We've waited a day and five hours in orbit, almost six hours now. Uh, so some of the hydrogen has boiled off and our electric charge isn't great because this was never meant to hang out a long time in low Earth orbit, meaning that half the time is out of the sun's light. And so we've depleted electric charge thanks to that. Uh, so we need to fix this situation pretty quickly. Thankfully, we do have a plot here. We're currently 377 kilometers away from the target and our closest approach distance is 118, but after this burn, we will have it at 2.6 it looks like. So that is the goal. Alright, now this is going to take some doing. Uh, we of course have to relight the engines, meaning we'll use some of these little SRBs to boost us a little bit. Uh, but first, let's turn to the node. We have Smart ASS plan to do that, and then I'm going to activate RCS. Technically, we're probably going to end up ditching this stage, so the RCS it uses won't matter. Uh, the RCS fuel we have up here is locked, so everything should be all right. Yeah, the RCS fuel here we're not going to use much of anyway, so we must uh, wasting it is not a big problem. In fact, uh, wasting it will uh, give us delta V probably because uh, it's not very efficient anyway. Okay, here we are approaching the node in one minute and we're a little bit off so I'll let that settle. It is a radial burn as you can see. Not the best thing but um, I wanted to hurry this up otherwise we could have waited another orbit and then uh, done it a little bit uh, more prograde retrograde but okay I guess we can go here so let's settle the fuel down and burn Uh, closest approach just and started going up. Okay, well, um, I think we'll have the other end do the rest of it. Uh, this is the transfer stage. I don't want to burn any more of it. Okay, so uh, we'll leave this here and we'll make further man maneuvers with the return vehicle. Now, the return vehicle doesn't have, uh, it just has a tiny little bit of fuel left in its J2 stage here. But if we could uh, switch off the tanks up here and just use that, that might be a good idea. First thing we want to do is match speeds with the target, then that's why we kept the J2 here. And so we'll use the remaining fuel in that stage to do that, and then we'll separate off, because it's better to maneuver without all that. If we're going to try and dock, I don't want to have this hanging around. Okay, here we go. Let's uh, settle the fuel down to the tune of about uh, one meter per second. So I'll wait until we get to target relative velocity of just 41, let's say. Okay, here we go. All right, well, that's all I'm gonna do with the J2. Okay, so let's set. Ooh, and uh, we should have had separation boosters or something. Let's unlock the fuels. Now there's plenty of delta V when you when we don't have the lander. So that's a good sign. Forty three tons here. It's probably gonna have to make part of the Mars transfer as well. It's gonna have to help out with that. Hmm, at this rate we might have to light the engine. Yeah, we're accelerating too slowly. Okay, let's light it. It's a very quiet engine. And I don't know how many relights it has, but I think it's a lot. Because it eventually gets adapted to be the shuttle's OMS engines, and then it's just used for all the maneuvers. Okay, looking good. We're getting the... Velocity marker in line with target here. Close approach distance is now below one kilometer. It's going to take us a little bit of effort to slow down eventually. 
the RCS thrusters don't seem to do a whole lot here. I wonder if the solar panels are somewhat blocking them, but at least they're doing something. So it's not a it's not a total miss or something. Okay, I think uh, 5.9 meters per second is as fast as I want to go here. So let me just time warp a little bit to close in this eight minutes. Okay, it's looking good. Our time to closest approach is still remaining tame, and our closest approach distance is below 100 meters now. We've used a bit of the fuel, but uh, not a horrible amount. Well, maybe we can get Planet Shine to help us out here, because I think we're coming into dock. Because the numbers are working out. I'd rather not wait until daylight. Okay. Alright, so we're pretty close to facing the return stage. Not a huge turn necessary. Alright, that looks good enough. I'll just leave that be. Okay, well, we're pretty much lined up now, under a meter closest approach distance, 0.5 meters per second. Of course, we'll have to slow down and get closer than that, but uh, right now we're still over 100 meters away from the target, so I don't want a time warp, so I'm just going to sit here and wait. Okay, here we go. Uh, says distance to target 16 meters, or it could be 19 meters or so. Point is that uh, it's still two minutes left, but we have to... Really be careful here now. It seems like things are a bit off. Seems like we're a bit high here. There's some indication of that there. But that doesn't indicate it. Let's slow down though. Somehow I don't think the time the closest approach is right. I think we're gonna meet it in less than two minutes here. And yes, I do have that as my target. Take SAS off. Okay, come on. Let there be magnetism. No, there doesn't seem to be any magnetism right there. Okay, there we go. Alright, excellent, docked finally. Okay, let's shut down this engine, because we don't want that going yet. Is that shut down? I didn't hear it. Okay, it is shut down. It should have made a sound. Now you shut down these things and the tank on this side because I want to preserve that fuel as much as possible. And so now we have this stage being the only fuel and we see that we have 2,500 meters per second. So short of what we need to transfer. So we'll use the, that side to do the rest afterwards. I think that's the only way we can go. Okay, let me turn off RCS. It doesn't need to be going right now because right now we need to plan our transfer to Mars. Okay, wow, we've got a quite a peach of a possible encounter here because um, this is just a single burn, 3,648 meters per second, and no mid-course plane change because we're encountering Mars at the at one of the nodes. And so uh, right there, that's our encounter. And that's in 171 days, which is not too bad, a little bit quick. But uh, yeah, as you can see, we already have a pass at Mars here. 224 kilometers, I could bring it in. Uh, but you see that just uh, this is actually a 0 0.01 change in increment in time 
That's uh, that's per so a hundredth of a second is what we're talking about there. Gets it to 11 kilometers there, and uh, 221 kilometers there. But you can see the pass does sort of cover the area of these contracts here. So uh, we won't have to make too much of an adjustment. I mean, of course, that's the way the, the planet is rotated right now. But if we get into this sort of orbit, we would eventually be able to uh, pass over those locations pretty closely. We'll have to only make minor adjustments. So this is pretty good. And we've got an hour and seven minutes to till it. But, uh, yeah, I don't know if we can do it all in one burn. That's the problem. So it looks great, but uh, I think we're going to have to do two passes, and so I'm going to have to replot it, and who knows what's going to happen after that. But anyway, it's looking good so far, so I'll uh, take it to the maneuver node. Okay, so we're six and a half minutes away from the node. I'm going to turn on RCS and let Smart ASS take us to, to the node. Again, just using the fuel on this side here so that we don't waste anything we might need later, but it's going to take a little bit of time to turn it. After that, we'll light these rockets and to settle the fuel down, and then we'll go. All right, I'm going to settle the fuel down. And we'll just use the engine gimbling to turn towards it. Here we go. It's gonna be a long burn anyway, 11 minutes, 34 seconds, just on this part, and this won't complete the burn. We'll need to use the service module for the rest. Okay, we're off, and hopefully this won't uh, put us into too long an orbit, so we don't deviate too much from what I was planning. But, uh, you know, we're a whole day off from the actual timing of it, according to Kerbal Alarm Clock and uh, Trajectory Optimizer, or whatever, what, is, what is this called? Uh, Transfer Window Planner. And so, uh, yeah, if uh, one day off doesn't uh, cause problems, I guess we will be good to go after going around the planet one more time. Okay, so we're about to run out of the stage in about 30 seconds. It's going to give us an extra 150 meters per second in the meantime. Uh, that leaves us with about 1,200 meters per second to burn with this portion. And I'm still not sure how much, how much we're actually going to have when we get to that portion. We know that without the lander it had a fair amount, but the lander is pretty heavy too. It's carrying a lot of fuel and even SRBs and so we'll have to see. Bit of suspense here. So it looks like we'll be in like a 10 hour orbit, 9-10 hour orbit. That's not too bad. Okay, that's the end of the stage. I suppose we can exhaust the RCS fuel here too. Oh, a little bit of surplus on the liquid oxygen. Should have had that fixed. Anyway, um, is it going to give us much delta V? Not really. Okay, uh, I think I'll just move on. There's probably no point. These are all locked. That side requires aerosene as well, so it's not like we could uh, transfer the fuel and make it useful. Okay. Let me do this carefully. I'm going to decouple from here. Okay. And now let's find out our delta V. I wonder how we got that 20... Oh, let's turn off the RCS. That 23 sitting down there. Must be the SRBs. Okay, now I'm going to activate this engine. Okay, and I'm gonna control from here. Or here. Okay! Ooh. Alright, so uh, 7,000, I mean, 3,760 odd. That's just with that engine. Uh, these are backward facing now, so they're actually subtracting out of the total. Well, 
here's the thing we need uh we need uh, obviously a thousand two hundred to get there then we need a little bit to get into orbit around around mars we'll use some error breaking but the the initial part we're not going to error break i don't think we'll get into a very high orbit and then we'll use error breaking to bring us down so we'll actually capture using the engine and then uh we will after that i think uh we'll need about about 2,500 to get back. This is going to be pretty tight. Yeah, we'll have to see. Okay. Well, anyway, we're on this part now. Let's see how far we get. Okay, so here's the replot, and we've got periapsis of 600 kilometers, which is fine. The inclination isn't quite what I wanted uh, from before, but it's all right. Let's see how much it would take to get into orbit. I don't think it should take too much, but I don't know. It's a little bit fidgety because, uh, well, much is uncertain. Okay, so how much is that? Uh, that's about a thousand. Maybe we should air break. That's a tough decision. Okay, that's barely in there. How much is that? 900 okay well so it looks like we're talking about 900 if we want to do a propulsive capture now uh, obviously on the way back we're not going to be carrying all the mass of the lander in fact everything below this point gets decoupled so we're gonna have a lot more Delta V than it seems so that's a positive so maybe we could spend 900 there, but it's tough to say. Because most of the, of the mass is actually on this side. You can see how small the lander is. Anyway, let's just do this part and then uh, uh, ponder it on the way over to Mars. Okay, here we go, waiting for Kerbal Joint Reinforcement. And, uh, well, I guess I'll give it a little bit of RCS first. Settle things down. The RCS on this stage is really underpowered. Okay, let's go. Forget if this thing has a lot of gimbling. I don't think so. I think I need to keep the RCS on to keep things stable. But uh, we are on our way. I don't think it'll take uh, too too long before we get this 1,200 meters per second done. The lander portion is a little bit complicated. Uh, I think I need to separate some stages here. These I probably want to have lit on the way down. The SRBs are only to give us a kick on the way up. Okay, we are on escape. It looks like we need about 400 meters per second of excess velocity beyond escape and that's what we're we're doing right now not sure we'll need all of the Delta V that's indicated there but we'll see so I've decided that probably what we're going to do is we're going to air break part of it I don't I don't feel like I want to do a completely propulsive capture but we don't have to go too deeply into the Martian atmosphere I think we'll uh, go high and keep it uh, cool and uh, use, uh, use the engines for whatever we need to do after that. It's tough to say how, uh, how high or low we should go. Certainly it has to be above 50 kilometers. That, at least uh, based on previous experience, I know uh, 50 kilometers would be a very uh, firm capture and probably a little bit hot, maybe a little bit risky. Then again, uh, we are uh, we are approaching quickly. I mean, this isn't a Holman transfer. Obviously, we're approaching at the at the node to avoid any mid-course plane change. The Holman transfer will be over here somewhere. So maybe the fact that we're going to be going a little bit faster should change my estimations a bit. Okay, approximately the last half minute of the burn here. And we're getting close. I'm going to take Smart ASS off and change to SAS as usual because I don't want it wandering as I make adjustments. 
Okay, well, we'll take that. A little bit off, as you might expect, since that, uh, that whole thing was fine-tuned to, like, very tiny amounts, but, hmm... That's changing in a weird way. Every so often it hops to 613. There, it hopped again. Okay, why don't I uh, just uh, plot something? Because it looks like uh, adjusting for RCS is not having my in intended consequences there. Okay. Okay, well, doing a periapsis of 23 kilometers, it won't be exactly that, but it looks like an 85 meter per second burn, which means we're going to use the the main engine, the service propulsion system. All right, here we go for this adjustment, and let's hope it works out. Okay, point two off. Let's see what that did. What did it do? It's uh, it's kind of on this high pass here. Let me try and use RCS to maybe tweak that. Okay, looks like uh, RCS has successfully gotten us what we want. It's not quite at the inclination I want though. And see, this sort of orbit's not gonna hit that those locations there necessarily not very easily now they're a little bit further south tough to say but uh, we'll hope to get into a loose orbit and then we can adjust our inclination at apoapsis in that case if we get into a tight orbit we won't be able to do it very easily okay but that's definitely uh, an approach to Mars no problem there so let's go to Mars Okay, we're now in interplanetary space, and after the SOI change, it looks like we are now crashing into Mars, which is fine, you know, we can fix that once we get over there. But, uh, yeah, we are now in interplanetary space, and just in case you're wondering, even though we have local control through the Saturn, Saturn Instrumentation Unit, I do have one of the reflectrons uh, tuned to, to Kerbin slash Earth. This one has no target, but we only need one tuned. Here, this one is tuned to Kerbin. So, uh, yeah, we are doing that properly. And, of course, once we get to Mars, we have satellites in orbit already, so those can help out too. We have uh, this one, which is the Angua, and this, uh, uh, that's, the, that's the lander portion of the Angua. So I guess we only have the Angua, so only one. Limited help there. Okay. But uh, we, we do have that. All right, let's continue in orbit. Looks like our electric charge situation is just fine. I haven't reoriented into any particular position. You can see that uh, they, they all, they're all getting some sunlight, but this one's a bit shadowed, so it's not the optimal amount of uh, electric charge generation. But uh, we'll see if we need to reorient and then do it at that point. Excellent power generation. No problems. Oh, now we have a periapsis somehow. Now we have 305 kilometers. Didn't even cross an SOI on the way here, so I don't know how that happened. Okay, uh, well, now we have 1,700, which is way off. We want it closer in. Let me take SAS off. Need some RCS to spin us around a bit to the other radial vector. And then we'll bring it in to, uh, I think 60 should be safe. I think I want it at 60. Could cause us to burn up. Could be alright. We'll find out. So here we are, approaching Mars. Sun's there. There's Mars. Probably won't use the main engine, we'll just uh, just using RCS. So I'm expecting that this service propulsion system will be able to take some heat. Don't know if that's true or not. Everything else can be packed in and we'll go this side down. 
it's a risky, risky maneuver, but that seems like the thing to do. Okay, so uh, long RCS burn. That's what we're doing right now, getting the periapsis down. And I won't torment you by having video of the entire burn. As usual, I'll cut it out. But we're not using the service propulsion system, just for you to know. We're reserving that. I'm not going to try and relight it too often. I'm pretty sure it's definitely rated for 10. So uh, we'll keep it to under that. Anyway, uh, we'll continue to 60 kilometers periapsis. Okay, so here we go. And... Um, okay, uh, 57.5 sounds good to me. Alright, so uh, we'll put it there and we'll get closer before retracting the solar panels, I think. Okay, so we'll have 17 hours worth of battery life and periapsis is in 23 minutes, so no problems there. Now let's have Smart ASS hold retrograde and we'll have it use the RCS fuel to do that. Uh, our periapsis is now 48, that's a little bit too low. Hmm, how did that happen? Okay, Smart SS is doing a pretty bad job of getting to that, uh, that marker, so let me just handle it. And also let me at the same time handle the raising of the periapsis. Well, this is a bit tedious. After all the things we've had to do that were quite tedious, this is pretty tedious. And uh, basically our RCS thrusters are trying to push us away from Mars to raise our periapsis. That's what's going on here. Uh, it's almost almost comical, but there we are. Well, anyway, I'll return to you once we get that periapsis back up to where it was. Okay, there we go. 57.49 kilometers. I'll take that. And, uh, well, it could be too high. Probably not too low. I'm going to retract the Commutron 16s because they're supposedly going to snap in the atmosphere, though... I don't think we're going to get into any thickness that could actually do that to them, but uh, we really only need them to communicate with the lander once it's decoupled. So they're not uh, really important in this phase. Okay, looks like we're ready to go. Well, it's an interesting sort of mission. Gotta admit that. Don't think anything quite like this has been done before. I mean, in real life. I mean, it's sort of similar to Apollo itself, but not with a probe. Uh, it's, I don't think a uh, um, sample return mission would have been done like this. I mean, docking it back up, of course, is a complication that nobody wants to deal with at this kind of range, but... It's interesting. Okay, well, here we go. We are in the atmosphere of Mars, by the way. It extends all the way up here. What's the actual height? Uh, it says 130, so it's actually the same as for Earth. 130 kilometers. We're going at 5.5 kilometers per second. I should tone down ambient, uh, I mean the planet shine. Yep, there we go. Okay, I'll risk a little bit of physical time warp. But uh, while burning before, there were some wiggles on the docking port side, so. Gonna have to be careful about that. Well, we're already getting decelerated. You can see our velocity is going down even though we're still approaching periapsis, so that's a good sign. We are catching drag here. Let's see what the situation there is still. Got a long way to go before orbit. Okay, we've got some flame effects here. 65 kilometers. Got flame effects. Okay, within a kilometer periapsis now. Velocity is going down 
reasonably well. Still not captured. Heat, I guess we should check. Very mild. Ambient temperature, negative 120 degrees Celsius. Temperature, 11, 12 degrees Celsius. See, these parts are sort of sticking out. They're even cooler. The RCS ports are always trouble, but they're they're frigid. So no apparent problems. And we are past periapsis. We're on the way back up. Orbit does not seem to be curving around very much. We'll probably need to use the engine to slow down more. Yep, a long way from orbit, so uh, I'll probably run the engine now, I think. Ooh, interesting effect. That's a very different effect than uh, we get in vacuum. How's its ISP? Well, still reads specific impulse of 314. Heat's going up, but that's expected, and the engine's on. Well, we'll see how much delta V we have to burn off to get to orbit. May or may not condemn us to failure in terms of the sample return. Okay, I just plotted to see how much more it would take. It looks like we're at 180 meters per second and decreasing, so we'll have about 2,000 meters per second left in this stage. It's pretty close to what we're what we need. I remember we're gonna end up uh, dumping all of this portion, so we'll have more than 2,000. And I was estimating about 2,500 for return to to Earth. So, yep, it's gonna be sort of a close call. Let me have Smart ASS head for the node instead of straight retrograde right now. Anyway, we'll adjust our periapsis at apoapsis, and again, we're making further air breaking passes, so it's gonna be in the atmosphere. Clearly this wasn't deep enough, but it uh, kept our vehicle safe, which is the most important thing. Okay, we have capture. Let's just get the orbital period down to a reasonable amount. We don't want to be waiting forever on this. Let me take it off Smart ESS now. Okay, I can deal with 14 days. All right. Okay, so uh, as it's going around for the 14 days, we'll need the solar panels out, of course. Once it uh, heads back for an error breaking pass, we'll have to bring them back in. But here we are in orbit around Mars successfully. And so we can proceed with our plans, but I'm probably, uh, well, I'm definitely not going to bring it in for a landing today. And I'll, I'll save the other air braking passes for the next episode as well. Because I don't want to... I've already spent quite a long time. I don't know how long the video's going to end up. But uh, all the docking procedure and the transfers and all that took quite a while. And I'm not exactly fresh enough to make critical decisions about the survivability of this mission. And so I'll save that for the next episode. Alright. So uh, with that, with us in orbit around Mars... Getting ready to bring that orbit down a little bit further before landing. And of course we're landing just with this portion. I'll say thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.